Hey everyone, and welcome to part 5 of our Citrix for Beginners video series. In this video, I'm going to walk you through installing the virtual delivery agent for your application servers as well as your virtual desktops. So I'll start first with my application server. If you're just doing virtual desktops, the process is going to be exactly the same. It's just some of the wording will be a little bit different. But otherwise, let's, let's go ahead and let's jump into this. So we're going to select our executable, just like we have in the past videos. And in which case, I'm going to choose Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops. But rather than choosing this delivery controller option, I'm going to choose Virtual Delivery Agent for Windows Server OS on the top right. If you're doing VDI, it's going to say Desktop OS. And we're going to create a master for our machine creation services um, image. So let's go ahead and select that. Um, we have core components we can install. It's going to install the virtual delivery agent automatically, but you can install Citrix Workspace app as well, which if you're not up to date with Citrix, it's essentially the replacement for what you, you know as receiver. Uh, but I won't do that for, for this. We also have different components we can install, such as App V if we're going to use um, application layering. Um, Citrix files for our content, but I'll go ahead and just leave the defaults for now. Now we're going to add our delivery controller address. So I'm going to add my first one, test the connection, choose add. I'm going to add my second delivery controller here, um, test the connection, choose add as well, and we'll do next. So we have additional features we can add. We can choose to optimize the performance. We can use Windows Remote Assistance. Um, we can use uh, real-time audio transport for audio. We can enable MCS IO, which if you're using MCS, highly recommend MCS IO. It will improve your overall performance. And if you are using the shadowy features, we can utilize Windows Remote Assistance. So I'll select all the options here. Um, firewall, just do next, and then we're gonna hit install. So while this is doing its thing, let's jump over to one of our Windows 10 machines and walk through that same process, except for our virtual desktop. So I'll go ahead and mount my ISO here. And let's give that a second while it's picking up the CD drive. And we'll go ahead and launch this. And we wait. All right, so choose virtual apps and desktops again. Virtual delivery agent for Windows desktop OS. You'll see everything else is actually grayed out because it's detecting this as a desktop operating system. But we could install Studio. So we do have that option. I mentioned that before that we could put Studio on other machines. And we're gonna do the, the same exact thing. Um, if you see this error here, which I get all the time, it's basically saying you're missing um, Microsoft Media Foundation, which is generally you're missing Windows Media Player. So you can go ahead and install that, but I'll ignore that for now. Um, same thing here, we'll just do next. Let's add both of our delivery controllers. Choose add. And if, if for whatever reason you get, you're getting an X here, um, first thing I would check is make sure you, when you open up Studio that you connect to your site because maybe your site's still unconfigured or turn off potentially a Windows firewall because that might be blocking communication. And we're gonna install. So we'll let it do, let this thing do its thing as well. Let's see the status of the other one. And you will get a prompt to reboot. You might get a prompt to reboot twice. I've seen that happen before, depending on, on where your Windows updates are. Um, one thing to know as well is I already downloaded the Citrix optimizer to optimize the settings for our application server and our virtual desktops. Um, if you just Google search Citrix optimizer, download it'll show right up i'll also put a link in the description below so you can go ahead and download that to really optimize your performance and turn off some some unnecessary 
um, services that could all go down and slow down your Citrix environment. And what did I type wrong? Let's try that again. Well, I am fat fingering really bad today. Uh, that's why I missed an eye here. All right, and again, if everything goes well, it's going to just rerun the software executable. But in this case, I can't find it, so I can browse to it if it'll let me. It will not, so I'll just go ahead and relaunch it here. And it should pick up right where it left off, just like with our delivery controller. So now we're doing the virtual delivery agent. And it is installing our next prereq. So let's jump back to our master. And this will most likely ask us to reboot as well. But what I'll do is I'm going to pause the video here and I will reconvene as soon as it's done downloading. Thanks, guys. All right, so everything is installed and you should see the diagnostic prompt again. So we'll go ahead and hit next here. And if all is good, we have check marks across the board. We're going to hit finish and it's also going to do one more reboot. So while it's doing that, let's jump back over to the other master here, the Windows 10 machine. And that is done as well. So we'll also do next, make sure everything looks good. And we're going to reboot this as well. So I'm sure you all saw it took a long time to install that virtual delivery agent. That's expected. That's why provisioning these machines manually can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Of course, you can always snapshot them and then create copies from that snapshot from a template. But um, it's not as good as, as utilizing either machine creation services or provisioning services nor the, the RDS prompt. So I'll go ahead and log back in here. And one more thing we're going to want to do on both of these is you'll see I have my Citrix optimizer there on my desktop. Again, I'll, I'll put the link to the description below. That's fine. Ignore that message. So here you'll see I have an application I can run. So you just want to go ahead and double click that application. You're going to want to choose run for that application. And then you're going to choose the OS optimization. So you'll see it gives a recommended. It can detect what your what operating system you're on already. And what I'd recommend is have everything selected. Just run and analyze. And it's going to analyze everything on your system. And then it will give you... Um, optimization optimizations based on um, that analysis so you could go ahead and optimize your your master image whether that be your application server or your your windows um, desktop operating system right so that's all done for this one and this one's doing windows update but it's the same exact process Again, I mentioned this before, but you can also use a VMware optimizer.